Serving a world in motion. NAV Canada is a privately run nonprofit corporation that owns and operates Canada's civil air navigation system. In addition to being one of the most active, Canada has one of the largest airspaces in the world. To better service our country, NAV Canada is improving its service through innovation. One of those exciting innovations has been the recent introduction of space surveillance. This marks a big change in the traditional approach to tracking aircrafts using only radar. Radar is now a 100-year-old technology, which is limited by its line-of-sight focus. Not only that, but the farther an aircraft is from the radar receiver, the less clear and less reliable the image is. Now, with space surveillance, blanket coverage is provided by a satellite to ensure there is uniform consistency of images across the entire region. For history buffs, in 1920, Croydon Airport, located in London, England, was the first airport in the world to introduce air traffic control. Their tower was a wooden hut 15 feet, aka 4.6 meters high, with windows on all four sides. Of course, modern control towers are no longer made of wood. They are significant and distinctive structures easily identified by their height and distinctive design, which is capped by what is referred to in the industry as the tower cab. The tower cab is the working office for air traffic controllers who are responsible for the separation and efficient movement of aircraft and vehicles operating on the taxiways and runways of the airport itself, as well as aircraft in the air near the airport. Air traffic controllers working in Area Control Centers, or ACCs, coordinate the safe and efficient movement of aircraft in flight between airports. You are now seeing the tower control operations at Pearson with tower controllers providing pilots clearances and instructions to maintain separation from other aircraft during takeoff and landing, as well as taxi instructions to and from the runways. In addition to their digital instruments, tower controllers have a direct view of the airport and aircraft and are using radios to communicate with flight crews. Keeping track of multiple moving variables, their job is to maintain a safe and orderly flow of air traffic within Pearson's control zone. The control zone is a defined airspace surrounding the airport. Let's spend a moment seeing the array of technology that air controllers use surveillance displays, flight data processors, and communication systems. The screen is a radar display of all aircraft either arriving or departing. The next screen provides the air controller with a view of communications with aircraft both in the air and on runways. By visually comparing the data and information on both screens, the airport controller can see the location of the aircraft either in the air or on the ground, the location of other aircraft or ground equipment, the status of the flight, and be communicating with the pilot directly, all occurring simultaneously in real time. The next screen is ground radar images of all ground traffic. This is used by ground controllers to issue directions to all ground vehicles to approve their movement. We are now in the simulation training area at Pearson. Clever use of projectors on every wall has transformed this room into a fully simulated control tower. Two controllers are receiving training from two experienced air controllers. Notice the similarity in layout of the equipment and screens to the real workplace. All data on the screens is being simulated to provide a variety of experiential learning while under the careful observation of the two instructors. Let's end with consideration of what makes this an interesting job. First, all air controllers share a deep interest in working with aircraft in some way. Second, they are very much interested in having a very responsible job. Think of how few area and tower controllers there are in relation to the number of aircraft they are responsible for. Air traffic controllers issue the directions according to strict safety standards set by Transport Canada to all aircraft. By doing so, they ensure the passengers and the flight and cabin crew are being managed, whether they are in the air or on the ground. Now that is both an interesting and a responsible job.